I'm excited. Let's go. Come on. What's going on, everybody? This is Les from Cannabis Wiki. I am here at the 2019 Can X Business Conference and Expo. Lucky enough to be standing with Felicia and Cannabis Licensing Authority. Felicia, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so, for having me. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, how's it been here at the Conference Expo? It has been good. We have gotten the opportunity to really interact with a lot of industry players locally and internationally. And basically tell person a lot of the information about how you're able to access licensing locally in Jamaica. Mm. So, I understand that you guys not just set the bar, but actually created the standard. Right, so the Cannabis Licensing Authority was created in 2015 under the Dangerous Drugs, Drugs Amendment Act, and that act established authority, decriminalized ganja for small quantities of ganja, um, and also allowed the Rastas to use ganja for sacramental purposes. Now, in the creation of the, of the authority, this allowed us to now be able to ask us the, as authority to develop an orderly industry, legal industry for ganja and hemp for medical, therapeutic, and, ser and scientific purposes. It's huge. Right. So the other thing that we were, we, were, we were tasked to do is also enable industry. And thirdly, to grant, to issue licenses, permits for ganja for medical, scientific, and therapeutic purposes. So Cannabis Licensing Authority, you guys like kicked down the walls here. Pretty much. We did that. So we, we, we really opened the door, Jamaican doors, um, for ganja and hemp for medical and scientific and therapeutic purposes. Right. So persons have always thought of Jamaica as being somewhere where ganja, where our name has been synonymous with ganja, but really and truly we didn't have an, a legal industry. Right. So that act, the change in the, in the Dangerous Act in 2015, that allowed us now to create a legal industry for medical, scientific and therapeutic uses. That's, a, that's incredible, it's a breakthrough. Right, definitely. So. How many people have you guys uh, issued licenses so far? Okay, so, so far we have issued licenses to 44 licensees. So, and that our first license was actually issued in October in 2017, but since then we have got, gotten up to 44. There's a further 11 applicants who we are waiting for them to pay their security bond and their license fees, and after that is done, then the li their license will also be issued. So for the issuing of the licensing, you guys take everybody step by step through this? Definitely. So the first stage is where you fill in your application form that can be found on our website or you can access it directly from us if you come into our offices. So once you fill that form in, then you will take it to us. We will go through a process to ensure it's completed correctly. Once we know it's completed correctly, then that's when we will accept your application fee. Okay. Once we get the application fee, we now take it to a desk review stage where we look through the form um, properly to ensure that everything is up to scratch. Right. And then we will do some verification of the person the person or company trying to come into the industry that they meet, meet the standards required. Once we get there, then you'll be issued you'll be issued a conditional approval right. and once that is done then you can now put your money in the ground as an investor to start bringing your facilities up to the standard required for that license and once that is done and we have examined the facility and we realize that the facility is up to the standard that is required for the license that you're applying for then we will now grant you a license Jeez. once we <laughs> grant you the license now then you are required to pay your license fee, and once the fee and the bond is the security bond is paid, then your license is issued and you can go into operation. Very, very thorough. Right. I like it. Yes. Uh, so, what makes you guys stand out more than anybody else? Well, I have to say the reason we stand out, as you know, Jamaica has a brand for ganja, and what many persons don't recognize is that locally, ganja has been used for many, many, many years dating back from when we had indentured servants for medical purposes. So all our, wow. all our grandmothers, all our grandparents, everybody has been putting ganja in rum, putting it down to rub ailments, to right. use for, for, for glaucoma, for asthma, just so many different illnesses. So that's what makes Jamaican cannabis industry unique and the Cannabis Licensing Authority. I like it. So it's almost like the rest of the world is catching up by legalizing everything, but, but Jamaica's been doing it from before Traditionally. That. Traditionally, it is what we have done. We have known, we have always acknowledged the medical 
use of cannabis and we have always been doing our own kitchen, I would say <laughs> kitchen research. And what has happened since then is that even from many years back, we have been doing research that has been back in all this kitchen research to say that yes, it does work. I don't know if you know of Canasol, which was actually uh, made by a, a local researcher here. Things from, I don't remember the exact date, but um, Dr. Manley West, and that is a treatment for, uh, for, for glaucoma. And that's an actual pharmaceutical. And there's also asthma cell, which is used for asthma. Oh, wow. And those are Jamaican, came, coming out of the Jamaican space. This is uh, a little bit of groundbreaking. I like it. Um, I haven't been with somebody so thorough into the cannabis industry, especially here in Jamaica. Right. So, I mean, it is important for you to understand that Jamaicans, we know ganja. And for that reason, no matter how many other countries want to come in and say, Oh yes, we've been doing. We, we have legalized the industry before you. It's hard. It's very. It would be very hard to trump our traditional knowledge. Mm. I, I actually, I don't think it's possible. I, I wouldn't think so either, because uh, like like we were saying earlier, Jamaica is known for ganja. Yeah, definitely. That's what we're known for, and so this industry has really just cemented our knowledge and given us the opportunity to use that traditional knowledge. Yeah, definitely. So where would people be able to find you guys online? So the Cannabis Licensing Authority, we can, we can be found online on our website at cla.org.jm. We're also on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and we're also on YouTube. Excellent, excellent. So did we leave out anything? Is there anything you'd like to specify? Of course. I have to specify that the Jamaican industry, when the government created this industry, it was created in such a way to ensure that our locals who have the brand of Jamaican ganja has been built on their backs would be able to benefit. Right. So for that reason, we ensure that companies come in to work with us here, Jamaican, you have to have a Jamaican partner. You have to be working with someone who is Jamaican that's or beautiful. ordinary resident here, meaning you've lived here for at least three years. Okay. And that's very important to us. Yeah, that that's is very important to us because, as I said, we have been through a lot for the name of ganja. Mm. So that's the most important part for me. Felicia, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today. Yes. Guys, I appreciate it. Cannabis, it's a beautiful thing. This is uh, Lester from Cannabis Wiki. Felicia, <laughs> keep it locked. We'll see you soon. See you soon.